All right, in preparation for your test, I wanna go through some problems on the review guide. So keep in mind the SPP we've talked about in class, the shape, the part you're dealing with, and the property related to that part. So in this problem here, the shape is the uh, rhombus, right? And then the part we're, we're dealing with are sides. So the part would be sides, and then the property of sides of a rhombus are gonna be that they're congruent, okay? So that's what you do. So all of these sides are congruent to each other. So it doesn't matter how you set it up. Uh, pick any two of them and set them equal. So for example, uh, let's just do these two. So 2x minus 3 is going to equal to x plus 4. Again, why are we doing this? Because the sides are congruent. So this side, x plus 4, is congruent to this side. When we subtract x from both sides, and then we add three to both sides, we end up getting seven for our answer, okay? All right, for a parallelogram, what do we know about the sides of a parallelogram? So the sides of a parallelogram, opposite sides are gonna be congruent now. So with this variable S, what we first have to do is find M using these two sides and then plug M in. So we have two M plus eight is equal to three M plus, uh, minus one. So we move the smallest variable first, and then we add one to both sides, and we get m is equal to nine. So we plug m equals the nine into here. Five times nine is 45, minus two is 43. So s plus one is equal to 43. S will equal to 42. All right, down here, we have a parallelogram, but this time we're dealing with the Diagonals and diagonals in a parallelogram bisect each other. That means they split each other into two equal parts. So this is 28 and this is x minus 15, and they're going to be the same length. So x minus 15 is going to equal to 28. Uh, we're going to add 15 to both sides. And so x will equal to 43. Okay. All right, over here, same thing. These two are going to be equal to each other, so 4x minus 23 is equal to 3x plus 14, and you're going to get x equaling to, again, move the smallest variable, and then add the numbers, or do opposite of the numbers, away from the variable. So you want to move the numbers away, and you get x equaling to 38. Okay. All right, this problem here, IK is the entire diagonal and this is half. So we can do this one of two ways. We can divide that by two or we can double this, right? So these two added up will equal to this. So there's two ways to do it. I prefer to do this because this is an odd number and I don't like to deal with decimals uh, if I don't have to. So we have this half plus this half is equaling to that. So now we combine like terms Okay, move our number by doing opposite. And then you end up getting three and then a decimal. I think it's 3.756 or something. Okay, so we see the, oh, 3.625 is the answer for that. So we see our answer is here, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next set of problems. Now, these problems here, we have to look at the shape. And again, the directions in this case tell us the shape, the shape's a parallelogram. The part we're dealing with are angles of a parallelogram. So there's two properties. Opposite angles are going to be congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. So to find the consecutive angle, we take 135 minus, uh, subtract it from 180, and then opposite angles are congruent. And so we'll end up with these answers here, okay? All right, now in a parallelogram, the diagonal is a transversal and we're looking for alternate interior angles. So Angle two is gonna to equal to 45. Angle three is gonna to equal to 22. And so in order to find one and four, and by the way, these are congruent because they're opposite angles, we're gonna do 180 minus 22 minus 45, and that answer will be 113, okay? All right, over here, um, this is a parallelogram, not a rhombus, so keep that in mind. So. Angle four is vertical, so angle four will be 82. Angle three is a linear pair. So if you take 180 minus 
82, you'd get angle free. Um, this is alternate interior to that. So if this is 50 and this is, uh, I believe, 98, yeah, then angle one is going to be 180, the triangle minus 50 minus 98 will give you 32. Okay, so there's the shape, part, and property for diagonals of a parallelogram. All right, let's take a look at these. Okay, again, the shape in the directions tells us it's a parallelogram. Um, and we know that all three of these have to add up to 180 because it's a triangle. And so when you do 2x plus 4x minus 10, plus x plus 15, all of that has to be 180, and you'll get x equaling to 25. So we're gonna combine the x's, so that's 7x uh, plus five equals 180, subtract five, okay, and then x equaling to 25. All right, over here, uh, we have two variables. So what we're gonna end up doing is solving for y, and then plugging y in to get what x is. Um, and we'll go through that in a second. So these two angles here are consecutive. So 12y plus 8 plus 5y plus 2 is going to add up to 180. So we have 17y plus 10 is equal to 180. Subtract 10. And then we get y equaling to 10. So what we now need to do is plug it in. So there's one of two ways to do it. If we plug it into this angle, these angles are consecutive, which we can do. This one is gonna be a little bit easier because whatever this is, the opposite angle is going to be congruent. So we have 12 times 10, which is 120, plus eight is 128. So 2x is equal to 128. X is gonna to equal to uh, 64, because your answer is there, okay? So again, we're taking the angle properties of parallelograms. All right, now in a rectangle, um, we, we name it as a rectangle because it has one 90 degree angle. Um, and also, this is 18. If this were 45, it would be a square. If it's anything except 45, it's a rectangle. Um, and so angle three and angle one, or sorry, angle three and this 18 are alternate interior because we have a diagonal. So this would be 18, all right? And then if this is 18, what we have to do is find uh, 90 minus 18, which is going to be 72 here, okay? Um, and then in a rectangle, VA create isosceles triangles. So, because the diagonals bisect and they're congruent to each other. So if this is 18 and 18, angle four is gonna be 180 minus those 18s, which is gonna be 144. So if this is 144, angle two is gonna be 180 minus 144, which is gonna be 36. Okay, so there's your angles for that problem. All right, now this shape here is a, it's a parallelogram, it's a type of parallelogram called a rhombus. And so the diagonals of a rhombus, in this case, these two angles are gonna be congruent all of these angles are gonna intersect at 90 degrees. Um, and then this will be congruent to this one. So if this is 68, this has to be 68 because the angles are bisected. And then these also have to be 68, okay? So to find angle one then, we have our right triangle. So the whole triangle is 90, we have, or 180. We have 90 given because the intersecting diagonals are perpendicular. And then uh, we have 68 here. And so we should get 22 degrees as our answer for, for that problem. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. All right, so now in this problem it says we have a rectangle. That's our shape, right? So what part are we dealing with? We're dealing with diagonals. So what do we know about diagonals of a rectangle? They're congruent and they bisect each other. So in this case, they don't give you a picture, but if you wanted to draw a rectangle, it would look like this, something like that. So HJ is a diagonal, right? And IK is a diagonal. So these two diagonals are going to be congruent to each other. So X is equal to two X minus seven. Subtract the smallest X. 
Okay, over here we get zero, which is okay. And then we're gonna move the numbers opposite. So we get x equaling to seven. And then since x is a diagonal, the diagonal will also be seven because we do have to plug the value back in. All right, over here, same kind of problem. We set them equal to each other. 3x plus five is equal to five x minus nine. Move the smallest variable. And then add nine to both sides. And we get x equaling to seven. Now we have to plug it back in and you can, you can pick whichever one you want. Um, I'll choose this one. So three times seven is 21 plus five is gonna be 26. All right, for these here, we have trapezoids, but specifically isosceles trapezoids. And we're dealing with the angles. So this, the shape is isosceles trapezoids, the part are angles, and the properties are that we have consecutive angles and we have base angles are congruent. So these two are base angles. So angle one is gonna be 67. These two angles are consecutive angles, which are supplementary. So we take 180 minus 67 to get 113. All right, similar here. Angle two is a base angle. And then these two angles are consecutive. So if you subtract 121 from 180, you would get 100 and, or sorry, 59 for angle one. Okay. All right. All right, over here we have a kite. In this problem, we're dealing with the angles. And specifically, the property of these two angles is that they're congruent. So the whole kite is 360, we subtract 101, we subtract 48, and then we're gonna divide that answer into two, and you would end up with 211 before we divide it by two. And we're dividing it by two because there's two congruent angles right there. Okay. All right, over here, this kite, uh, we know angle one has to be 90 degrees because the diagonals of a kite intersect perpendicularly. So again, we have a kite, a part are the diagonals, and then what properties do those diagonals give us? Um, these two angles are going to be congruent um, because it's part of the two congruent angles there. All right, and so since this is 90 and that's 27, we can find angle two by doing 180 minus 90 minus 27, and we would get 63. And since angle two is 63, so is angle three because they're both congruent angles. All right, down here we have the area of a parallelogram and we have base times height. Now, we talked about in class, the height is going to have a 90 degree angle and it's gonna be perpendicular to its base. So in this case, this height is perpendicular to this length, which isn't listed on this side, but it is over here. So we have eight times H, okay? So those two are gonna to go together. And then we have 10 times seven. So we set up this equation and the way we do it is divide by eight and then we get eight. Uh, the area is 70 because of this. And then the height of the, the missing dimension is going to be uh, 70 divided by eight, whatever that is um, on you. All right, uh, B here, this height is gonna go with five. So we have five times H and then we have four times 4.3. And then we divide both sides by five to get H. The area is gonna be 17.2. And then whatever this is in the calculator will get you your height. All right, over here, uh, we have 14 times 11. That would get you the area of 154. And then that would equal to 22 times H. And then we would divide both sides by 22 to get our height for that particular problem. All right, let's take a look at the area of trapezoids. So the area of a trapezoid, you'll be given the equation for the test, so you don't have to memorize it, is going to be base plus base times height divided by two. Okay, so in this case, six and 10 are the bases, so we add them up. The height is six because we have our 90 degree angle, and then we divide by two, and we will get an area of 48. All right, over here, um, this is a parallelogram. No, sorry, it's a trapezoid. So we have our bases, 4.4 plus 3.2 times three, and then divide by two, and we will get an area of 11.4. All right, area of a rhombus is diagonal times diagonal divided by two. 
So the length of the diagonal, okay, in this case is 40, which makes that 40 as well. What we don't know is this. And so if you don't know the diagonal distance, this will come up in kites and it will come up in rhombuses and you'll have some questions like this on the test. We have to use Pythagorean theorem. So we don't know what this is, but we do know this is 40. And so if we look at this triangle, we're missing the leg. And if we're missing the leg, we're gonna subtract. So we do 50 squared minus 40 squared, and that will give us a side length of 30, which means the whole diagonal is gonna be 60. Okay, so now we have 80 times 60 divided by two, and that's gonna be 2,400. So this answer will get you the area. All right, uh, same thing over here. This is 11, this is 17, this is 17. So this is pretty straightforward. We plug this in and you get uh, 34 times 22 divided by two. So in this case, they give you two halves and all you have to do is know that the diagonals are bisected and then plug in the other values. Okay, it's when you're given a side length that you're probably gonna end up using Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. All right, down here, kites, we use the same area formula. So eight times eight, or sorry, eight plus eight is 16, times 20 divided by two would be an area of 160. All right, down here, this is 15 times 23.5 divided by two. Okay, oops, sorry, times divided by two, and you should get an area of uh, 176. So hopefully this makes sense um, to you guys as you go through these questions. Also keep in mind how you would do things if you were graphing points, which we'll talk about in another time.